Welcome to this video on computing AC steady state equivalent impedance. Uh, in this video, we will take the circuit that is shown and compute an equivalent impedance for the frequency of 2.86 times 10 to the 6 radians per second. Now, one point that I need to make, uh, we are not going to be computing any phasers. Again, phasers are complex numbers that represent voltages or currents in a circuit. And in this case, we're not going to find any voltages or currents. Uh, we will be computing an impedance, which is a complex number that uh, represents uh, typically a combination of resistors, capacitors, and inductors. So let's begin. The first step in computing the equivalent impedance is to find the impedances of the inductor, which is this guy, and the capacitor. Okay, so the impedance of the inductor, ZL, is going to be J omega L J times 2.86 times 10 to the 6th times 159 times 10 to the minus 6th, which, if I've worked this out correctly, will be J 455 ohms. Okay, so let's replace the inductance by the impedance that we just computed. Okay. Let's compute the impedance of the capacitor. That's 1 over J omega C, which is 1 over J omega is 2.86 times 10 to the 6th. C in this case is 769 times 10 to the minus 12th. And when I do these computations, I work this out, I get minus J times 455 ohms. And so let's replace the capacitance by the impedance that we just computed. Okay, so the next step is to combine series and parallel impedances. And impedances combine just exactly like resistors do, except that um, we have complex values rather than just real values. So the first thing to note is that we have a series combination here of the resistor and the inductor. So the equivalent impedance of the series combination is just the sum of the two. So that would be uh, 10 ohms plus J 455 ohms. Okay, so rather than redraw the whole thing, let's just cut out our resistor and inductor replace it by a box. And this box has the impedance of 10 ohms plus J 455 ohms. Okay, so the next step is to notice that we now have just a parallel combination of the capacitor and this impedance that I just computed. So the impedance of the parallel combination is going to be minus J 455 ohms, that's this guy here, times 10 ohms plus J 455 ohms, divided by minus J 455 ohms, uh, plus 10 ohms plus J 455 ohms. Okay, this guy here gives us this, and in the denominator, and this guy here gives us this. Okay, 
So now all I need to do is actually compute what this is. And for this I will use Wolfram Alpha. Okay, so we have J, whoops, Alpha, we need to call this I because it's not an enlightened engineering program. And this would be minus J455 And we let Wolfram Alpha do the computations. And we get then that um, the impedance is going to be 2007 ohms, basically, whoops, here, <coughs> minus 455i. Okay. So if we go back to our circuit diagram, we have then that the equivalent impedance is given by 270 ohms minus J455 ohms. Okay, that's basically what we have here. So, hopefully that was uh, fairly straightforward and made fairly good sense. Um, and that pretty much wraps up the process. Just as a matter of interest, um, I thought we could actually compute the equivalent impedance for a couple of different uh, frequencies and see how things change. So, uh, if you want to hang along for the ride, this is going to be, I'm sure, fascinating. Otherwise, I guess you uh, can quit now if you don't think it's going to be that fascinating. Okay, so let's redraw our original network. And our capacitance again is 769 picofarads. Resistance is 10 ohms. And inductance is 159 microhenries. Okay, so let's increase the frequency by a factor of 10. So it's now 2.86 times 10 to the 7th. And see what the equivalent impedance is going to be. Well, uh, using the same approach that we did before, or I'll skip a lot of the steps, we have that the um, inductance becomes J45550 ohms. The capacitance becomes minus J45.5 ohms. And the resistance stays the same. OK. Now the equivalent impedance of this guy, as we had similarly, is going to be 10 ohms plus J450 or 4550 ohms. And the overall impedance will be minus J45.5 ohms times 10 ohms plus <coughs> J450 or 4550 over the same thing except added rather than multiplied. And if we go to Wolfram Alpha and change the values that we had before. We find the result to be essentially 0 
minus 45, well, yeah, 45, actually 46.0 if we round to three places. So this equivalent resist or impedance is going to be minus J 46.0 ohms. Okay, so that of course is fascinating. Um, what you'll notice is that as I increase the frequency by a factor of 10, the magnitude of the impedance goes down quite a bit. Um, it turns out that uh, this uh, circuit that we have here, uh, the impedance actually peaks fairly close to uh, the frequency that we started with, 2.86 times 10 to the 6th. Okay, so that's another example of computing this. Um, I guess in the uh, spirit of complete and thorough exhaustive work, let's suppose that we have 2.86 times 10 to the 5th rather than uh, 2.86 times 10 to the 6th and see what happens to our computations. This becomes minus J 4550 ohms. This becomes J 45.5 ohms. And the computation that we would have then for the equivalent impedance we'll do this one in hot pink to remind us that we've changed things, it is going to be um, minus J 400 or 4550 times 10 plus J 45.5 over the sum of these guys. And we go to alpha to do the computation. We make the changes that we would get. It does the computation. And we discover that uh, the result in this case is 10 point two plus uh, J 45.9. Okay, so this gives us a final result of 10.2 ohms plus J 45.9 ohms. And as you can see again, um, the uh, magnitude of the impedance is quite a bit lower. Okay, so that concludes this example of how to find the equivalent impedance for an AC steady state uh, circuit. So, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful.